I had an issue yesterday with my uh, contact. I dropped a contact down the sink, it, it turned out. Didn't know where it was at it. Oh, the day I break these chains, I'm bound for the life of the simple things. First, because it had been when I was trying to put it in the case, but it must have fallen off my finger or stuck to my finger when I went to go and clean the other contact and we tore apart the the plumbing and found the contact in the uh, p-trap so i have it currently in a solution that's supposed to clean it so that uh, i can start wearing it again so it's sitting in here and in the meantime i'm only wearing one contact so you know i'm basically a pirate today so are well i got picked up by a line screw over here <laughs> he's driving away we're heading back to canada we still doing zz top uh yeah all right do we have any uh psych fans the old tv show there's the police station that was supposed to be in santa barbara that was in the uh so, line screw pointed it out for me. This is my old hood. I used to live <laughs> a block from here. We're going for a little walk. I need to get out of the street here. Probably should turn off the camera and pay attention to traffic. <laughs> We're at the second largest fair in Canada at the Pacific National Exhibition. And uh, we got our wristbands to see ZZ Top tonight. Nice. What a score. How swarm do you think it'll be tonight? Uh, how many people are going to be here? Yeah. Uh, well, the park will probably have 20,000, 30,000, but uh, I think the concert probably only holds about 5,000. ZZ Top! Woo! It's time for ZZ Top! ZZ Top! Woo! This place is an absolute zoo tonight. This is definitely busier than the uh, county fairs when I was a kid. Okay, every girl's crazy about what? A shark shark dress band. <laughs> All right, guys, where's your tour bus? Do we get to see it later? Oh, we saw that last time. <laughs> so here we are. We're sitting here at the PE Amphitheater. I'm getting ready to watch ZZ Top. And the cool thing here is we still got a nice mountain backdrop. Not very many places that you're going to have that right next to the city. Actually, if you over there, you can see the lions. They call them those two little dips on the mountain over there. Yeah, they're called the lions. The lions. That's why with the bridge over there is called the Lions Gate. Oh, okay. It's kind of like our Golden Gate Bridge. Yeah, Lions Gate Bridge. Woo! Woo! You had to expect this guy here was going to be at a ZZ yeah. Top concert. Because I like to grow a big beard. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get started. ZZ Top. ZZ Top to the house. morning everybody so Andrew and I had a blast last night over there at the ZZ Top concert and now this morning we're headed off to the YouTube creators thing in Vancouver so I look forward to see seeing what that's all about and uh, seeing if I can learn a thing or two I'll let you guys all know how it goes and if they allow me to film maybe I'll film a little bit but most of the time I'm gonna be just focused on learning 
So what does Tim Hortons to mean to the Canadian culture over here? It's like uh, mom's apple pie. <laughs> mom's apple pie. <laughs> the last time I was at Tim Hortons was with Justin back when I met Line Screw here and Justin way back three years ago. Timbers. Sorry. Now I'm in character. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, what do you think? So, uh, quite a few people. Are, are we doing this all in one room? I'm assuming it's back here in the back corner I yeah, saw. Yeah, I have to assume. Whole house. I don't see Justin Credible here. Yeah, what happened to Justin? Justin, where did you go? Um, I don't have a rhyme or reason to my life. I just kind of go live whenever. But the idea I got from watching the old girl that does the 15 minute cooking challenge is doing 15 minute or 10 minute like posing challenges and knocking out poses in like random locations because the thing about desktop lives is you're at, I don't, I shoot like out on location. So the, the fact that I can go live from a mobile phone on location in a real scenario real random crazy people coming up asking for money in the middle of a photo shoot. Yeah. It's like, you know, or if a car like crashes in the back, you know, anyway. Yeah, so, this, it goes down. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, that's my spiel. So how, how, how would you involve like your audience? Or how would you interact with them in this So, interesting, right? In a few of my live streams, my audience is kind of bossy because like I'll go, no seriously, because I'm like, okay guys, I got a model here, I'm gonna put her here, and then they're like, oh, make her sit on the ground. Oh, bring her to that pole, do some arm, introduce some lighting, I'm like, dude, can I just show you guys what I'm doing? And you watch, like, what my audience starts telling me what to do to my, it, it's, yeah, it's a shit show. <laughs> That's an opportunity for a super chat somehow. Yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take their suggestions for something. Yeah. Usually whenever like I get super chats, I'm like, oh I got a super chat and then I'm like, alright my model, you gotta do like a tour contest or something, I drop it like a side. But you know, it depends on who I'm like. I shoot women, sorry, it's a little sexist, but it is what it is. Sorry. Okay, so what's your favorite food? Okay, so uh, Jason's actually my business partner here, so, and I like to throw him under the bus. This has become a common, you know, uh, trend for us in our lives. Now, here's the problem with our channel, initially the challenge was, we do, you know, video marketing, video SEO, it's kind of boring topic sometimes, it's the help, you know, rather than, say, inspirational or, um, you know, educational, uh, educational or entertaining, right? So, we have to put the entertaining aspect into it. So, we started doing lives, both of us lived in Japan. Yep. And you can notice I do most of the talking. I don't let him have the chance to do any talking. Make sure I get up in here. But yeah, I mean, when we went to Japan, we had all these unique experiences and seeing what the YouTubers do in Japan versus America versus Canada. I'm from America, by the way, but I'm up here in Vancouver visiting my business partner and other people. And it's just awesome what, what we see, the difference trends with live streaming versus on-demand videos. And we're going to continue to share more about that. But yeah. Okay, it's good. He passed the mic back to me again. So it's the Captain Kirk and the, you know, the... Spot right there, there you go. And what we had to do was break it up a bit, right? So we started doing live streams where we would make fun of each other, right? So the comedy aspect definitely shows people the behind the scenes of who we are. And you know, something interesting about Japan and I was chased by Yakuza and Jason worked at Apple in Japan. So we start to show more of that in, in our live streams. That's one of the things we do. In addition to that, Dan Locke, who's at the back of the room there, he likes to be incognito there. <laughs> But that is the king of high ticket sales, Mr. Dan Locke, as well as he also has, he does, you know, Jeet Kune Do, which is like Bruce Lee's martial arts. Oh, yeah. That kicks ass, like really kicks ass, right? Yeah. It, so when we've been filming his stuff, we've been doing a lot of behind the scenes, and now we're starting to get a lot more of the audience. I mean, the martial arts group, they are crazy. Yeah, like, I mean, crushing it. Yeah, so they, they want to, oh, sorry. Yeah. I mean, because if you think about it, if you've got stuff out there, if it's too much how-to or too much vlog or you know too much like just kind of the lifestyle you got to think about what's entertainment to your audience as you connect with them and so we definitely want to continue to speak about that too so the behind the scenes right behind the scenes again is the main topic we're trying to get to we're trying to do more behind the scenes interact get people to you know chime in what they want to see and then we get them to perform it so hopefully we'll get them to kick someone's ass or you know take someone down in a park or something like that or defend themselves 
And we want to not only film it, but also be behind the scenes and let the audience join us. Like I gave the advice to Amy for her fashion channel as well. So that's our ideas. So it's been a really good time here at the uh, YouTube Creators Day. In fact, at the very end, we got the uh, open bar going and everybody's having a good time, just socializing and connecting with each other. Very important, by the way. Andrew and I are getting ready to head on out of here. I'd love to be able to stay longer, but he needs to uh, let his dog out. <laughs> I'll talk to you a little bit more about what I thought about it here. Canada, eh? <laughs> so, Andrew, what did you think of the YouTube uh, Creators Day? It was great. We ran into... Um, who did we run into? RV Geeks. Oh, okay, let's start again. It was great. We ran into RV Geeks. <laughs> they, they actually weren't that geeky. You know, mildly, I'm going to give them some credit. They, they, they try to be geeks, you know. They're a little geeky, but not too geeky. They not, were good guys. That's right. Yeah, they're, they're really super nice guys. Uh, and uh, look for them on my channel. True story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was it was good times. Um, yeah, they fed us uh, booze, snacks. Uh, we had a lot of little workshops with many other uh, YouTubers. And it was great to hang out with people that are doing different things things and just nomad RV stuff people that are teaching you how to tie a bow tie and people how to you know fix things or uh, you know how to cook Thai meals and some of these people were just incredible some of them you know, we had people in the audience there that had 1.7 billion views and even some uh, people that just had these tiny little channels that only get maybe a couple hundred million you know just tiny little YouTube channels you know well, I thought it was great. I really learned that I have a lot of stuff to improve. You know, some of the things that I thought were the best were just how they had gone over different things that had helped other channels grow. You know, YouTubers that they'd kind of reviewed that had large audiences. And I just realized the pillars of building a channel, how many of them that I really fell short of and I noticed a couple of them that I do really well without really having ever thought about doing it and that's probably why I have any sort of a channel at this point I did think it was really cool that they had the happy hour thing at the end you know and they had drinks there and so it allowed for a lot more socialization I'm really right in the same corner as Andrew. It was so nice to have an opportunity to just hear from people that had a different type of content that still had some of the same problems that maybe we do, but they have a complete different angle on the kind of content they're doing and, and some ideas that they had that who knows that we might be able to implement. Get out there, connect with people, live your big story, and make sure you do something every single day to reduce world suck. Peace, it's guys. Been a long day without you, my friend. And I tell you all about it when I see you again. We come a long way from where we began. Oh, I'll tell you all about it when I see you again, when I see you again.